Good morning. Welcome to St. Paul's. In the last service I mentioned at the end, I was going to mention at the beginning of last service, but I'll mention this morning is that with the mass mandate, this is actually one of the exceptions in the rules, that if you're leading a worship service, you don't have to wear one. So that's why I'm not wearing it in front of you right now. As long as I can be six feet apart, and I think I'm way past six feet apart from anybody. So glad you're here with us this morning. Uh, this morning, our thoughts are going to focus around the gospel lesson for this morning, Jesus' parable of the wheat and the weeds. Parable that talks about believers and unbelievers living in this world until that day comes that this world will end. That'll be the focus of our worship services this morning. The order of service that will follow will be on the screens. May God bless you in your worship this morning. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open my lips. Amen. Hasten to save me, O God. Praise be to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart, confess our sins to God our Father, 
asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Amen. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, the Spirit to think and do what is right, that we who cannot do anything that is good without you may be, by your help, be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. In our gospel lesson for this morning, Jesus talks about the wheat and the weeds being separated on that last day of judgment. In our first lesson for this morning, we see the prophet Joel speak about what that judgment will be like. Let the nations be roused, let them advance into the valley of Jeshaphat, for there I will sit to judge all the nations on every side. Swing the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come trample the grapes, for the winepress is full and vats overflow. So great is their wickedness. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision, for the days of the Lord is near the valley of decision. The sun and moon will be darkened, and the stars no longer shine. The Lord will roar from Zion and thunder from Jerusalem. The earth and the heavens will tremble, but the Lord will be a refuge for his people, a stronghold for the people of Israel. Here ends our reading. Read responsively Psalm 18. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He rescued me from my powerful enemy. You, O Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. You save the humble, but bring low those whose eyes are haughty. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, will be forever. Amen. As we live as wheat and the weeds surround us, one of the tools that God has given us to, in that fight, in that battle, is the, is the honor of being the ability to be able to pray and talk to our God. In Romans chapter here, Paul speaks about that prayer. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts know the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Here ends our reading. Hallelujah. My word will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Hallelujah. Please stand for a gospel lesson. Our gospel lesson for this morning and also our sermon text for this morning is found in the gospel of Matthew chapter 13, beginning with verse 24. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in this field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed wheats among the wheat and went away. 
When the weeds sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you're pulling the weeds, you might uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned, then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They throw them into the blazing furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Here ends our gospel reading. We join in confessing our Christian faith according to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We join in singing our hymn, Thee Will I Love, My Strength, My Tower.
grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear Christian friends, have you ever gotten frustrated with the evil that is here in this world? It's not that hard to see it, is it? We can look around in this world and we see all kinds of ways that evil is happening. And we may, perhaps, we can even look around what sometimes is going on in our own lives and we can see how evil is hard at work. Or maybe you have this feeling like people shouldn't be doing that. Or maybe someone's expressed those fears that they are afraid of what's going on in the world today. Have you ever felt frustrated with evil? And yet God promises us something, doesn't he? God gives us a promise, and he says that I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will work with you. I will rule over all things for you, the church, for his believers. We know those two different things that go on in our life. We know that there is evil in this world, and we are frustrated by that evil. But we also know that God has given us a promise. That he will see us through any of that. But yet, even though we know those promises, sometimes it's hard to trust them, isn't it? Sometimes it's hard for us to trust our God. Because you and I, we live in a world that is full of believers and unbelievers between good and evil. Have you ever had those feelings in your life or in the life around you, then maybe perhaps we can understand how the people felt in this parable that Jesus is telling us this morning. A farmer had gone out and spread wheat, and enemy had come along and put seeds or weeds down in the field. And you can understand perhaps why those servants were frustrated. They saw the weeds coming up and they go to their master, do you want to us to go and pull them up. They were frustrated with the weeds that were there. They knew their master would not have done it. They knew someone else had done it, and they just wanted it gone. And so Jesus gives them an answer to that question. Perhaps the servants that were working there for that farmer, they almost expected a different answer. They almost perhaps expected the answer of that servant, that master, to say, yes, I want you to go pull them up. And maybe their answer even was, his answer was a little surprising to them. No, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let them both grow together until the harvest. This parable of Jesus is not a very difficult one to understand. This parable of Jesus is probably one of the easiest parables for us to understand. And part of the reason is that he has told us exactly what he meant by this story. He says, the one who sowed the seed is the son of man. The one who sows the seed is me. I'm going out there and sowing good people. I'm going to sow seeds that can be raised into believers. The field is the world. The good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. The enemy sows them as the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are the angels. As weeds are pulled up, burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will need weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the fiery furnace, so it will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This isn't that hard to understand. Jesus is the sower. Jesus is the one who goes out and plants his believers in this world. The Christian church. But Satan wants that gone. Satan does not want that wheat to continue to grow. Satan wants those believers to be wiped off the face of this earth. Because remember who, Jesus, who Satan is here. This is the one who went after the crown of God. This is the one who, at the beginning of time, wanted to sit on the throne that God sits on. And he rebelled against God, and he could not take his crown. In fact, you and I know what happened, that Satan is cast out of heaven. And so Satan is going to go after the next best thing that he can. He could conquer God, but he's going to go after 
highest crown, his highest achievement that God ever did, the creating of human beings. And so Satan goes out for us. As we look at this parable of the wheat and the weeds, you have to, there's a couple of things to keep in mind. As I said, Jesus is the sower. He's the one who plants the wheat. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. It's pretty simple, isn't it? So, so what? That's a big so what. And a little tiny little detail like that, what that means is that I don't plant wheat. God plants wheat. God is the one that plants people in this world. He's the one who brings them to faith. He's the one who sends the Holy Spirit. I don't do that. And neither do you. It's Jesus who plants this out in this world. We, God might use us to help that plant grow, but it's God who does that. And he says, I'm going to keep that harvest, that wheat safe until that harvest day. I will take care of my wheat. I will love that wheat. I will care for that wheat and everything. In fact, he says, I don't want you to go out and pull that wheat up because those weeds up, because if you do that, you're going to maybe lose some of the wheat by pulling them out. He says, no, I'll take care of it myself. We also need to remember who this enemy is, the devil. And over all the centuries and centuries that human beings have lived on the face of this earth, the devil's gotten good. And he will try everything and anything to try to pull us away from our God, to pull us up out of the field and destroy us. His top priority in this life is to destroy as much of the wheat as he possibly can do. And then finally, it's not our job to get rid of the weeds. Now that sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? It's not our job to get rid of the weeds. And sometimes people have tried that in times. There have been people who have tried to force those weeds out, forced to just drag them out. If you look at a simple thing like the, the whole thing with the Crusades, that's what the Crusades were about back in, in history. We're going to go wipe out the people who are not Christians. There have been people that have thought that you can make laws and you can just tell people that you can't do this and you're going to change sin. You're going to rip out those weeds by doing that. doesn't work. never has. It's not our job to judge the weeds and the weed. That's God's job. My job is to be that tool that God uses and teaches those truths. Now, that doesn't mean that we aren't to use his word and the sacraments. He says, use those words. Use that sacraments that I've given you. But it's not our job to judge it. Because as he tells these servants, there will be a time coming when I will. We're going to let those weeds and the wheat grow in the same field that when judgment day comes, then we'll separate. And we'll pull those weeds out and they're going to get burned and the wheat are going to store my barns. It's not our job to do it. It's God's job to do that. See, because then God's judgment is always fair and right. And our judgment is always clouded by sin. And so we know that when at this end of the age comes, as God judged the people of this world, and he separates the weeds and the wheat. It's going to be fair and done right. And so God says, let me take care of that. I'll be the judge on that. But let's let them grow together. Let's see what happens. And that same God loves you and me. That same God could perhaps at certain times when we do things or say things, that he, he would have every right to judge us and pull us out. But he doesn't. In his grace and in his love, he strengthens us, he helps us, he lets us grow together. And it's pretty cool when you think about it. The Bible is full of all kinds of examples of people that God had done that with. Think of, for example, Judas. Judas, the one who betrayed Jesus. Over and over again, Jesus reaches out to Judas in love. Jesus knew what Judas was going to do, except even to the very point of the end of his life, Jesus is still reaching out to him, still showing him love, wanting to win him back, but probably didn't. 
Or about Peter, one of the disciples of Jesus who stood there at that Passover meal and that Monday Thursday said, I will not deny him. And then a few hours later, he denies Jesus. It would have been so easy for God to simply say to Peter, that's it, you're done. But he doesn't. When he comes to Peter after his resurrection and says, Peter, do you still love me? And Jesus gives that response, yeah, go feed my sheep. Go do my work. I love you. This is a God who is good and gracious that takes care of the wheat in his field. We have a God who takes care of you and me. I think sometimes when we hear this parable of the weeds and the wheat, we focus more on the weeds part. But I think perhaps this parable has more to do with the wheat than it does with the weeds. Because this shows God is a good and gracious God, a God who cares for his believers, his wheat. And he doesn't want anything to happen to them. And this God will love them dearly until he takes them home and put them in his barns. This is more about the wheat, more about us than the one of the weeds and the one who sows the weeds. Because that part's going to be judged. That part's going to be taken out and taken care of. What a great and good God we have. Because you see that God's changed you. He's planted you as wheat in this field. He's loved you. He's cared for you. He's watered you. He's done everything he could. And we have a God who stretched out his arms on that cross on Calvary so that someday those same outstretched arms are going to say, come on in. Come on to heaven and be with me forever. What a cool promise that is from our God. So how do you get rid of all the fears and frustrations and the way that we feel about evil going on in this world? Whatever it might be, put it on Jesus. Trust him. Just lay all that frustrations and let him take care of the judging. Let him take care of all the rest of the evil in this world and take comfort that you are his wheat. And then these final words of Jesus really have meaning. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their Father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. May you and I hear that gospel, that promise of our God. In his name we pray. Amen. We'll continue this morning with our next hymn. Hymn that is, Lord Jesus Christ with us abide.
Please stand for prayer. Dear Lord God, we give you thanks that you have planted us in this world as your wheat. And as a good and gracious farmer, you care for us, you water us, you protect us, and keep us safe. And we are grateful for that because we certainly don't deserve it. In fact, we deserve to be the weeds, those that are sown by the devil, those that don't believe and trust in you. But by your grace and by your love, you have called us to be your own. And we give you thanks for that. May you continue to protect us and watch over us in all times and in all ways. In your name we pray. Amen. And we also join in praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated for a closing hymn. Good morning, and once again, welcome, and thank you for joining us this morning. A couple of announcements. First of all, that uh, this coming Wednesday, August 5th at 6.30, will be our next call meeting to call a second pastor here at St. Paul's, and so we invite you to come for that meeting on a Wednesday evening. Also, as you probably saw, it's in the announcements, also on the doors that came in here, Chris Driesbach um, will be here the next Sunday. For, for leading us in worship here. You might remember him. He's been here a couple times already. He had grown up as an atheist in New Orleans, and when Hurricane Katrina hit, everything changed in his life. And so he will be here this coming Sunday. I think in talking with him this week, though, I think we can still do that yet. We'll keep both services. Sometimes in the past, we've just combined it into one service and brought everybody together, but we'll keep the two services, and we'll keep the arrangement here on doing that. If anyone is not comfortable in coming, and for anyone else is watching online this morning, we are, we are going to be recording it also and be putting it up on, on the website and online. So um, either way with that, he'll be here next week on uh, Sunday, both at 8 o'clock and the 10 o'clock service. Um, I think that was about it. Um, one of the things that's kind of interesting is that m many of you know that probably by now, that last week on vacation here, the last 10 days before of vacation here, we were out in California. Our son and his wife live out in San Jose area, and so we were out there for 10 days. And there's a couple of things that are kind of interesting when you're out there in California. First of all, the whole mass thing, it's not an issue out there. It's a completely non-issue because you just do it. Been doing it since the beginning. Nobody's, nobody's, nobody got really strong opinions about it. It's just the way it is out there. And so you grab your mask, you go to stores, everybody's doing it. And I realize that there are lots and lots of op uh, opinions and things with that. We are grateful that we are doing that here at St. Paul's, and we're grateful for you guys following that. But uh, it was just kind of interesting for doing it for a week and a half, 
all the time. It's not even really an issue. It was interesting as we were even hiking trails in the mountains, there are a couple of trails, as we'd pass each other on the way, you would just simply have your mask down, and pull it up, as you pass people, and you put it down. No big deal. So anyways, I appreciate everybody following that here. Um, if this is something that can stop this, we certainly don't want this continue to be spread. So if we can do that, it'd be awesome. Um, I think that's about it. Ooh, one more thing I was going to mention. See, it's what happens when you get a short service without any liturgy in there. I get to talk to you at the end. No. Um, I forgot to say it at the first service, but uh, one of the things that we now can say after being out there is that we have a number of fifth grandchild on the way. Um, our son and his wife out in California are expecting their first. And now it's officially, I can, proud grandpa can tell everybody now. So I'm doing that. So, um, but they're expecting the end of January, so hopefully somewhere in that neighborhood we'll be going back out there and seeing the little guy or the little gal, whatever it might be. So may you have a very blessed week.